It's been a long, exhausting day. Your troubles just won't go away. One thing that gets you through these is watching cheesy. Week five. I'm one of your hosts, Chris. I'm one of your hosts, Kevin. And I'm your other host and button pusher extraordinaire, Mike G. Welcome back. Yeah. We saw four new movies. Let's just roll right into it. Let's do it. The We have watched 15 to date with 18 bodies. We'll explain that as we go on if you're new to the show. <laughs> but the first movie we watched was on Thursday, November 16th at 8 o'clock. Uh, part of the Miracles of Christmas, a world record Christmas. If you have the Hallmark Movies app, you could have seen this as early as November 9th. Wow. I'll give you a quick synopsis. Charlie is an autistic boy determined to get in the Guinness Book of World Records by stacking 1,400 Jenga blocks. His mother, Marissa, and stepfather, Eric, encourage him to reach for his dream, and they all celebrate when he gets the good news that he'll have a chance on Christmas Eve. In the spirit of the holiday, they organize a fundraiser, giving the townspeople an opportunity to donate and decorate a Jenga block with the proceeds going to benefit kids with autism. Charlie's journey to setting the Jenga record gives them all the chance to learn more, not just about themselves, but about what family really means. Aww. Aww. Directed by Jason Bork, who directed, we've already seen Miss Christmas Coming to Town and My Christmas Tree, My Family Christmas Tree, Mark Hefty, who we just saw who wrote a uh, mystery on Mistletoe Lane last week. Ooh, uh, nice. Nice. Starring D, Nikki Deloche as Marissa from The Curious Caterer in Five More Minutes. One and two. I've seen them both, Mom, as far as you know. Uh, <laughs> Lucas Bryant uh, as Eric from f- Five More Minutes, moments like these, and The Angel Tree. Which not, is to be, the- not to be confused with Luke Bryant. No. Yeah, yeah different guy. I no, got okay, confused. Okay. at first when I saw what this dude's name was. Yeah, Uh, And Aya Stalman as Charlie, who is an openly autistic uh, actor. And um, also, I do want to throw out friend of the show, because he's commented in our Twitter in the past, uh, Matt Hamilton. Boo! Yeah! (laughs) Good actor. (laughs) Bad character. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. That's what I was was doing the character. (laughs) We haven't booed a good villain in a while, and this might be the this guy might take the this case. guy. He's <laughs> anyway, such, he's such a good villain. Oh my god! Oh my god! Kristen, right. yeah. I wanted to ask you: Did you get the vibes? Because this thing starts in a library. Oh, and then not long after that, uh, one of the things that we see Charlie likes to do is stack not just uh, blocks, yeah. but also books. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. it remind you of another library stacking situation? <laughs> Stop. Perhaps. Stop. I've never seen books like this. <laughs> Get her! Uh, uh, yeah. I love that they also mentioned Harold Ramis in the movie. So it was like... Me too! Times. They there was, do. There was a connection. There was a connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I don't have big notes on this one, gang. Yeah. I, I'm not going to... Like, I love the story that we told yeah. this, like, semi-true story of this yeah. uh, kid that did this in yes. real life. Yes. Oh, really I didn't know cool. it was real. I didn't know it was real. Um, oh, yeah. and but I have a very important question for each of you. It has nothing to do with the movie, but it does. Okay. If you were going to sign up to get a Guinness World Record, what would you sign up Ooh. to get? I'm going to I'll start while you think because yeah. I thought yeah. about this. Yeah. Mine would be eating pickles. How yes. many pickles can one person eat? Kristen accidentally ordered a vat of pickles once, and it was a whole thing on Facebook, and we all followed <laughs> it and loved it. I think, like, yeah, I'm going to go. I, I also believe that I would be really good at eating challenges. I was always very into yeah. man versus food and, like, having to eat the biggest burger. So I'm going to go with, like, yeah, Christmas, like, apple dunking. Something that's, like, competitive <laughs> fast, but is, like, thematic. Maybe, would, like, maybe candy cane sucking. I, whoa. I yeah. would go with uh, cereal eating if there were no, like, diabetic repercussions. So, oh, yeah. we're all food. We're all food. I love that all of us are like, let's just eat food. 
yeah, yeah, why not? Um, I, I this movie you guys pointed at the top, nobody dies in this movie, which is great, but we do have a bad dad alert, yeah, bad dad alert, bad dad alert. Yeah. Like, he, he's a very bad dad. The um, absolute worst, but he is the best actor to play these parts because no. for some reason you're like, that guy's funny. Yeah, he's funny. I know. Once I think it's because character. we're bringing his past with us. And, and I know. And I'm just bringing three wise men and a baby in, and I just picture uh, it's like that same dude, but like in this movie being a bad dad. <laughs> yep. I, I, overall, I liked this movie. I, I actually did. Uh, I thought Charlie was a good character. Um, I don't know if you can bring up Mike's the maybe the picture of the Jenga blocks that I know he's got. The yeah, there's a few. There's a few different, different, different ones. This, this one. Yeah, that's so. Here's Peter, who is or Eric rather, who is um, his stepfather, and Peter. Or I keep calling him Peter. There's so many different characters this week, and everyone's names <laughs> a little different. <laughs> <True>. Eric. Um, <laughs> is he just wants Charlie to see him as his father. He's been his father his entire life. And there's a picture on the refrigerator that we see. And we know Charlie was like an infant. But Charlie desperately wants his father, which is Peter, to his biological father, to recognize him. And even saves a place for him, a seat for him. Which, which ultimately, also made me think of Waiting for Guffman. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, wildly different. Wildly different films. Different. Um, Mike, there, just yeah. so you know, uh, especially if you want to move on, there is a cameo in this movie by, so this is, whole week is cameos, yeah. by uh, Alden Maxwell, who is the actual record setter that this is based ah, on. And dude, um, dude. they are, uh, g they give a block to Charlie, you know, part of this whole thing where you can color a block. Um, and to what Chris said, this is not, there he is there. There he is. Um, <laughs> I thought that was the, like, uh, the what was the kid that, like, the girl liked? But that oh, he didn't like. That's what I thought oh, it was yeah. When he walked up, I was like, oh no. And I didn't realize it was just a, a charming cameo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I thought was a nice thing to do. He got the world record in uh in April. So there was no Christmas aspect to what he did. Not that that matters, but um, so yeah, and I believe he has since beat his own record. Wow. Uh, so you know nice. God, I need better hobbies than eating. Than pickles. Than pickles. <laughs> <laughs> I did like this movie as well, Kevin, because the thing that I enjoyed about it is like the the parents weren't on the rocks. They weren't mad at each other. Yeah. They were just like living their lives. And it was a nice reminder that like everything's not always so romantic. Yeah. Like, yeah. We didn't have to see this relationship start. We got to see the middle of this relationship. Right. And I really liked that a lot. Yeah, yeah, like improv, right? Start in the middle of the scene. Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, there's some dishonesty. I don't know how dishonest it was. Um, she just didn't want to tell Eric that she was going to see Peter, basically to say, listen, your son, which again, makes him the worst dad ever because like the he worst. knows nothing about this kid. He says, oh, can I see a picture? When he, he's like, oh, he's so big. And it's like, man, you suck, dude. You, you just suck. suck. Man. And he shows up at the end and then just, you know, doesn't do anything. But, like, I can't decide if I would have rather had him not show up at all. At all, yeah. Or that he showed up and that... I liked it because he at least weighed the fact that he saw Eric and is basically like, that's his dad. I'm yeah. in the way. And he left. And I was like, yeah, you should leave now. Yeah, get out of here, you punk. <sighs> Go back to an hour away where you could have a really... Ah, oh, my... Yep. Yeah, my, my overall take on it was I wouldn't skip this one. It, it probably looks for some of our more jaded fans like something they go, well, uh, um, it was enjoyable. So it's it, pulled, it, it pulled at the heartstrings at the end. Ooh. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I knew he... it was I knew it was going there and it was going to get there. And I was a little disappointed because because these are Hallmark movies. Right. Yeah. And everything oh, you're disappointed. <laughs> no, no, no. Sort of. Yes. Because the you know, because generally everything works out. So when he yeah. knocked over that thing from that point oh, on, no. I was like anxious as heck. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we could we could have had that conversation before with Eric. And then he's there and then he doesn't and actually gets the record. But he doesn't even get the record. And boy, what a yeah. lesson. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it is. So that was the only thing I was like, I can't. I don't want to. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I will wow. tell you my favorite scene, though. Oh, yeah, of please. Course, oh, please. Um, when, oh, my gosh, now I can't remember his name. Who's the kid again? Charlie. Eric? Charlie. Charlie. Chucky. Charlie. When um, Charlie uh, looks to the seat that where he marked um, for his dad, and his dad uh, is not there. This is my uh, my favorite scene. Let's watch. Yeah. yeah. 
Come on, Dad, stand up and take a bow. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh. I Joel. No. No. no, that was, sorry, that, no. Was, that was Austin Powers in Gold Member. Not, <laughs> not the, that was my favorite scene. Classic. But then on, oh Chris, what was your overall thought? Yeah. I give it a. I would say watch it because, yeah. like, if you have a heart, watch it. Yeah, it was cute. Watch your heart. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then on Friday, November seventeenth at eight o'clock, uh, we have navigating Christmas. Recently divorced Melanie and her son Jason visit a remote island for Christmas, only to find themselves running a real working lighthouse where she connects with the curt but cute owner. Also. Ooh. Should tell you right up front. Creepy snowman warning in this one. Right yeah. in the oh. movie. <laughs> Just be aware. There he is. Uh, that is what? not Lucy Hobbs, by the way, playing that part. I just... But... Yeah, but the elves or weird other things are creepier than the Santa in this photo. There's some hellaciousness going on here, Kristen. I, uh, just be prepared. Be prepared. Uh, we, we took Kit to see uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, so this was <laughs> very uh, triggering. <laughs> uh, directed by Peter Benson, who directed The Santa Stakeout. Remember that? That was an awesome movie. Mm. We love Paul Campbell and Tia. And uh, When I Think of Christmas. Uh, he was also the bad auditioner in When I Think of Christmas, if you recall, which we love. That was the, the director. So Yeah. Uh, written by Kelly Bow, uh, The Truth About Christmas, and Carly Smell, uh, Christmas by Design, which we saw a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I think you guys were okay with I did not like it. Uh, starring Chelsea Hobbs as Melanie Dalton from The Holiday Sitter. Yeah. Stephen Huzar as Peter. Huzar. Uh, we know him from Undercover Holiday. And every. Andres as Jason, who we know from great movies like The Holiday Sitter and Dating the Delaney's. We'll yeah, talk about this fella. He's he's getting around. That sounds terrible. I mean, he's getting, he's around. getting you know, around. You know what? I think that's an appropriate way to say it, Chris. Only because his character was written like he was about eleven or twelve years old. But there's also a love story, so like, oh, we can't cast eleven or twelve years. But his like <laughs> attitude towards things, I was like. I get teenagers, yeah, we, but like not like that. That he was a beehole, man. He was a little bit, yeah. Mm. Also, like I, I'm not. A, I mean, I'm a child of dad, dead, yeah, dead, dead dads. Not a child of divorce, so I don't right. know if. Wait, sorry. Uh, what did you? No. Oh, no. <laughs> you play ahead. Sorry, it was ready. I, I've never yeah, been more ready. It will be, be gone. Is that for me? <laughs> no, for this movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> putting the connection. <laughs> Chris, we have a bond. We have a bond. <laughs> so yeah, uh, listen, I. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Just I can't it. wait to eat. It's okay. This bit. It's okay. Go for it. It's Go like it. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't like, oh, this is the worst. Like I did like some of the other ones, but this is the worst. <laughs> this weekend, this was the worst. <laughs> this was the worst of this weekend. Oh yeah. And it was like, I don't know. This she was the worst to start, and then the kid was the worst, and then again he was kind of like weird from the start. Yeah. Like, the only nice people from the start were the like, the the like helper dude that drove the boat Earl? and the lady at the diner and, and the Ruth. little girl Earl and Ruth I agree with you hundred percent like they were I even wrote I was gonna put a Ben Schwartz gif up the were but were <laughs> were like she was this very busy businesswoman <laughs> which is totally cool and like her assistant um she's like have a drink the word a party relax and she calls her by her first name and the face she makes at her for calling her her first name I was like. <laughs> What? Quit that job, young lady. Absolutely terrible. But and, yeah, they're not likable. No. And here's the thing. I just, oh, God. I don't know. It was a lighthouse. I don't care about lighthouses. <laughs> it was a lighthouse. I just, like, I liked that this was, like, this lighthouse was going to save the town or whatever. Yeah. But also, I wasn't mad at Peter for having to potentially sell this because his dad died and oh. dumped it on him with wait, death. Wait, wait, wait. That's a dead dad <laughs> alert, everybody. Dead. Oh, that was the end of it. Hold on, one more time. <laughs> dead dad alert. Dead dad alert. Very quickly. Why don't we, just in case anybody is tuning in for the very first time, no, we course. are tracking every oh, dead oh. person that is mentioned on screen this season so that we can compare it with 
Die Hard. Die Hard has 23 dead people throughout the movie, not necessarily killed by John McClane, but die in some capacity in Die Hard. So far, we started the week with 18. This is our yeah. 19th. We are getting so close. So close. so close. So close. So close. So close. We might do it this weekend. No spoilers. No spoilers. Let's see. We'll see. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, we had Earl, like you said, he was yeah, very lovely. likable. Um, yeah, there, the fine print of staying in this lighthouse is you have to take care and decorate this lighthouse. And like, what? No, I actually thought that that could have been fun and charming, but they just didn't do much with it. No, they decorated they made it, it, it like, uh, I hate Christmas, so I just make yeah. people do this. And everyone in town knows he hates Christmas. How well, annoying. Uh, how annoying if you went, if you signed up for an Airbnb, you didn't read the details and you showed up. That's on you. would have been like, I'm out of here. Listen, like, that's on you. You can't, yeah. listen, it, it, you can't bring a pet. If it says you can't bring a pet, you can't smoke. If it says you can't smoke, don't <laughs> this is not, the same, not the same as bringing a pet. I think it is. You now <laughs> are a late housekeeper. That's but just here's the I'm thing, right? Know. Usually we have that like misunderstanding moment in a movie and then we're like, oh, they're so mad at each other. This is so dumb. This one was the worst I've ever seen in uh, my yeah. life because she had zero room to be yeah. like, I can't believe you're selling this lighthouse. Oh my God, Chris. It it should have been the, uh, like, yeah. I, it didn't make any sense to me that she was like, how dare you? I'm so mad at you. After it's three like, days. She was there for three yeah. days and she finds out he's selling, because he's in so much debt. And like, she sees his bills and that's what she does. Is she like basically is able to consolidate and do, but she sees these bills and she's like, what's that? And he's like, nothing. And it's like, she should have known immediately because it was clear as day what was on like, the on the bills. But yeah, then it, it turns out uh, Monroe, uh, Lachlan Monroe plays the gentleman. So good. Yeah. So he's good. Funny. So good. I mean, everything shows up at Hallmark. And... You, Kevin, you don't have one picture of Lachlan Monroe in here. I'm disappointed. I, I do have... so. You mean I don't see it uploaded then? But yeah, yeah. It's, um... it's labeled as B14 if that helps you. But oh, no, he's in there. I see him. Big though. Lachlan right, Monroe. Um, I just listen. I wear sometimes lip gloss. Okay, mm -hmm. it's just like a pop of color gives my lips that shine. But whoever did is. this Sorry. sweet, <laughs> oh, there he is. This sweet, gorgeous woman's makeup. Yeah. needs to stop using the MAC lip glass from 1999 yeah. because anytime it was like it, it it was all over her and then <laughs> he had to kiss her multiple times and it was I just it bothers me yeah. so much yeah. don't put these women in unlivable makeup yeah, she looks, she looks like she's struggling with this kiss here a little yeah. bit. Well, <laughs> this is the weirdest kiss of all because the spotlight from the, from yeah. the they, as opposed to like people watching, it was the it's spotlight this, from the lighthouse. It was like this blaring. This is like a clip off. from Where Are You Christmas? She looks like she's in black and white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried to get it right as that black that black <laughs> light blasts them. There are a couple of things I want to say before we move on, just because one, I need the tally. Uh, oh yeah, is in love with Ruth. However, Ruth's Marty, which I assume is her husband, yeah, is no longer with us. Yeah. Dead Marty, Dead Marty, Dead Marty. <laughs> yeah, I'm not celebrating Marty. Marty's death, please. I'm just saying we need the number. Sorry, Marty. Uh, that brings us to 20. Ooh, it's getting so close. <laughs> we still have two more movies from this weekend. Um, yeah, the, I, I was blown away at. This is a spoiler for the movie, but I have to say, because like that end of the movie, the shots fired. They they kind of clawed their way back with these two characters where I was kind of like in a place where it was like, okay. I agree. I agree. I, I started to like them more at the end. Not the movie, but like them. But, but then <laughs> she finds out, like Chris said, that he's selling the lighthouse and she's like, your father would be so ashamed. And I was like, I'm like you, Jesus. You and then no. he, he goes, you haven't told your son that your ex-husband's girlfriend's pregnant. And I was like, Holy it turned into like man. days of our lives for like five minutes. Yeah. And of course the kid overhears it and he does what any kid's gonna do in that situation. You steal a boat. You steal a boat. That's steal a boat. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. That's uh, in there. Please I, bring up wait, please, please please bring up the steal the boat. That is this the part where he actually steals the boat? Yeah. He's stealing the boat? Yeah. 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 He gets uh, trapped at sea. Have to say, uh, do you, I, I want to hear both of yours over of you, but this yeah. my favorite scene actually ties in to when he's lost in the boat, uh, oh, and they need to fix the lighthouse in order to bring the boat, uh, into shore. Oh, so, this is, of course, my favorite, Let's watch my it. favorite scene. <laughs> <laughs> Look there. 
Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, wait, that's oh, Pete's, no. dragon. That Pete's, oh, Pete's dragon. That was Pete's dragon. I forgot Pete's Santa dragon. shows up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Pete's dragon. Sorry. Rough storms. <laughs> Listen, uh, my overall is a... Oh, boy. Me too, but this is my overall. This was the most Hallmark of Hallmarks. So if you hate watch Hallmark movies, this is a perfect movie to watch. Yeah, true. I am not a fan of hate watching these because I feel like that's kind of a low-hanging fruit. It's the least yeah. thing to do. But yeah. if that's your thing, this is your movie. Okay. Next. <laughs> like, like I'm fine. I showed Pete's dragon. We're good. I, I, I I'll, I'll be. I'll show my cards in front. I really didn't enjoy any. I didn't really like any of these. They're all going to be in the lower half. Of, well, the next <laughs> one then, Mike. Was yeah, let's. And you up. suck. Actually, so I like one. Saturday, November 18th. <laughs> Are we really at November 18th already? I've done yeah. no Christmas shopping. Uh, at 8 o'clock, we have a merry Scottish Christmas when estranged siblings Lindsay and Brad Morgan travel to Scotland at Terrific. Christmas to reunite with their mother, Joe. A big family secret is revealed in oh. the trailer. I don't know why they made a big thing of this. <laughs> uh, director uh, Dustin Reichert, who directed Mystic Christmas, which I loved and Mike hated. Uh, Christmas hate at it. Biltmore, which we will see next week. Uh, written by uh, Andrea Canning, who wrote uh, Christmas Bedtime Stories. Andrew Gernar, Gerhard, Gernhard? Let's go with that. Who was the concept behind uh, Mr. Christmas and Next Stop Christmas. Mm. And input by Dustin Riker, the director himself. Very nice. Starring our queen, Lacey Chabert, as Lindsay Morgan from Hall Out the Holly in the Wedding Veil series, as well as Party of Five, important. Scott Wolf as Brad Morgan from A Christmas Love Story and Party of Party of Fun. Yeah. It's a reunion. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Or can I start talking? Yeah, please. <laughs> well, let's just go. We so we oh uh, yeah, we'll I'm sorry. What's your next I slide? Missed. Show us. No, I, I there's Lacey there there's there's Bear. They stunning. look great. They look beautiful. They yeah, keep that one up. Yeah. Keep that up for a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um I when I remember we thought that they were gonna be like a love Probably. connection and you I was, thought that I you thought that, thought that. Yeah. I thought that I so I'm glad they were playing brother and sister yeah. but what I will say is that this movie was ridiculous but also I thought one of the better acted portrayed a hundred percent right said the same thing to Julie yeah. there was they had some good yeah. chemistry of just the ensemble yeah um yeah. and like the woman that played his wife was wonderful yeah they, the mother was fine you know what i mean yeah. like everyone Absolutely. was yeah. and and those two have such lovely already uh chemistry and know how to work together on screen yeah that i'm Absolutely. i'm gonna say this i cried a few times Who's the wife Who's the wife yeah she was wonderful she was very good up and yeah she was very good i cried a few times because this was such a brother sister story yeah and not that my brother and i aren't close but we're not as close as we probably should be as brother and sister yeah. because life and also we're like i'm just the worst at visiting and yeah. and we don't live together and he was deployed so many places but like it reminded me of me it reminded me of my relationship with my sister as well yeah. like when we get together everything's great we're in love you know what i mean but like yeah. sometimes time passes and you're like you lose track a little bit it's crazy and i just sometimes i feel like and this was what was really cool about it was they because sometimes i feel like oh my gosh i know nothing about my brother i just know what we were yeah. and so what i was excited about in this story was that they you know rekindled over what they were and what meant to them and then like i liked that they were like well how can we do this together moving forward so right. that I, I i liked that part of it because it wasn't about sure she met this really hot scotsman but like yeah. it honestly was just about which will the, get their relationship and, and i liked it yeah um i do if you can bring up there's a picture in there where they first enter the castle and the reason is friend of the show keith nielsen or keith costume is Amazing. in the background Filming everything with their everything. Uh, there you go. There's Keith. Uh, had, I loved it. it. Made me so. Uh, nice. The other thing that was so funny about this is I don't know if you saw, but he had like a selfie stick. Do yeah. people still <laughs> use selfie sticks? Keith's character did. Keith's I don't know character. Exactly. Keith was like exactly. this person, a hundred percent selfie stick. Uh, <laughs> the supporting cast too. Um, Tom uh, Dunan, who is Irish, not uh, Scottish, plays Hamish. Mm. And that character could have been brutal, but he was so, there he is. He was so good. And so oh my God. Fun. he reminded me of a common friend Very of good. ours, Kristen named Alex. 
and oh. big energy all the time. And I was like, and I love it. And like, it's, it could be for somebody a lot. I loved it. I was just like, bring. Yeah. No, eventually I, I they, Yeah. I think it's been a while since we cast Kristen in a movie and I would want <laughs> this guy's part. Yeah. yeah. The nice. moment he walked in reminded me of like when I was in Scotland. Yeah on our honeymoon and we went on like a cavernous tour to and Glen Grange castle comes in and is friends. like let's go on a tour and i was like it's just oh, they, man. i i will agree that this is something that they do in castles in scotland so it wasn't actually that absurd like yeah. they're oftentimes they turn part of it into a big tourist attraction and the locals like play up their characters and things so whereas it could seem stereotypical like this is actually pretty true this is very yeah, yeah we did two of these tours when we were in scotland yeah, so exactly, exactly. <laughs> well the, the whole morgan family is called back to Glencrave Castle uh -oh. because uh -oh. who died? Yeah. <laughs> the Duke is dead. Oh, <laughs> live the Duke. We need a new Duke. The we Duke. Need a new Duke. <laughs> oh, yes. Duke. The Duke. Yeah, that brings us up to oh god, 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. Ooh. We um, can we could drink now. The amount of deaths we have can drink. <laughs> and they did. They had uh, some scotch in a whiskey tasting, which they was did. lovely. And they talked about the the history of scotch, which was mm -hmm. so good. Um, do we? Do we? Yes, do we, we do. Of course, we do. It, do we have a picture of the other? Uh, no, we have a GIF, my friend. But ooh. even before that, my searching fear is like, I don't want yeah, 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 yeah. my <laughs> yeah. We're all setting up different things. What do Wait, we want I, first? Let's bring up C14 because I just want to talk very quick before that. Oh. There were a lot of Easter eggs. And this showed us Salinger's uh, Pub, which is where they ultimately have this dance contest. And fans of uh, Party of Five would know that Salinger's Restaurant is what? the name of oh. the restaurant that the Salinger family, which I all didn't. of the, the, so it was an ode to the. Wait a minute. I didn't realize something that. something really fun. It's pretty good. Party of Five, two dead parent alerts. Can we? They don't count for this. Oh, count. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, this is all just for this countdown to Christmas. Yeah. But we also had a nice Ooh. visit from an old friend. An old friend. To be a dance partner for Lindsay oh. in this scene in Salinger's restaurant. I'm not sure if Mike's ready, so I'm just gonna keep slowly talking. <laughs> I thought we were gonna do. Didn't we have like another one of them? We have one another. Hey! Oh, we did. We did have that too. I'm so sorry, uh, Brad. It's okay. It's okay. Um, or not Brad. Uh, uh, Mac Bell is his name. Mac which Bell. Is name. His his dad, who used to be the caretaker dad. He was the he was the groundskeeper Willie of the estate in Scotland. <laughs> I, I, that's probably inappropriate these days. I'm not sure. We're at 22. Okay. That's 22. We are one away. One a mere one away. I see what you guys can see. You just wanted a picture of Will Kemp. Yes! Yeah, I don't Will have a Kemp. gift. I have no, no gift. There he is. Yeah, yeah. This was Come on. an amazing, amazing cameo that I knew nothing about, was blown away when it happened. Yeah. Um, there's so much to this. Obviously, just them together in the Christmas Waltz. Uh, this weekend, if you don't know, Great Merc and Family Values Channel or whatever it's called, uh, had a Paris Christmas Waltz, which Ooh. is the sequel, which stars none of the, I know, it's ridiculous. So I don't know if the lineup to this was coincidental. I would assume it was, uh -huh. um, but there's well, the queen and I loved it too when he crowned her the queen because the old queen is dead. It's over, yeah. Oh, there it is. The of Hallmark and Cute. we oh all God. went to her coronation. It was oh, that was a that was a wait. You're saying that was a deep cut Hallmark like uh, I okay. Know. You can tell. All right, I like I it. Mean, I take it. I mean, she's in back to back movies, uh, yeah. and we I have yeah. to pretend like it's a totally different character next week. So yeah, we'll get and the we'll get goodbye. That's how fantasy goodbye works. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Good idea. Um, mm. Yeah, I actually, you know, overall, I didn't mind this movie. That you know, the brother and sister come together at first over their anger at their mother for never sharing the information. Not so much about they. they <laughs> They didn't get their heritage, you know. They, yeah. no, um, they never got to meet their grandparents who died in a car accident, but it turned out that it was after they had been born. So I'm not yeah. sure if she told them that, and then another car accident happened. But I did not put them in as oh, okay. Part of the they didn't count. Like that. She left when she was 20. Joe yeah. left, did not want to be a duchess. Yeah. Um, and this becomes: Do Brad and Lindsay want to be a duke and duchess? Because of course does have the authority Doy. Doy. i was that's all i kept screaming at this i'm like how would you not how you would, have, 
they had very middling. They seemed not to care about their jobs at all. Uh, and this was a question to take like, over as Duke and Duchess. I just, was, that is a immediate yes. Immediate and also, yes. it wasn't. And it, they kept saying it's not like it used to be. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, even yeah, better. Yeah. yeah, off with his head. No brain. <laughs> I think that's the only thing that sunk this movie for me was I was like, it. Yeah, back to I think Chris's point, or maybe it was Kevin's. Acting, no problem. Production value, no problem. Yeah. Uh, Scotland looked great. But yeah, ultimately, I was like, oh, this is a this is a no brainer storyline. Why are we even having this? This yes, this, this debate. I loved it. I, that <laughs> said, I loved it. This thing is easily in my top ten. I, I oh. really. Did. I was a tiny bit bored. I was just overall, it was fine. It was fine. Mike, they're all in PJs. Bring that picture up. You know what? <laughs> Let's see everyone in their pajamas. Yeah, yeah, right. that. They did look cute. Nice. I thought uh, this, uh, nice. the actor that played the mom, also very good. Also very good. Yeah. We barely talk. I mean, I know we're going to save them, but also, come on, Scott, can we, we'll save it for Hallmark Holly yeah. Hunks, but we'll save it. This might be my. Well, why don't I have pictures of him? This might be my hunk. <laughs> you don't have a picture of him? What? No. Oh, you have Scott Wolf instead. No. Oh, sorry. I have the other guy. I have the other I guy. Don't you do? Why? That wouldn't be, well, wait, we can talk. Who's about the it. other guy? I didn't rate him. <laughs> regardless. Yeah, I would definitely watch this. I think it's a yeah, good it was movie. Good. It was good. Uh, yeah. I want a sequel. Really. I think I want the sequel. This yes. was too much of a prequel to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want Ooh. the like, what was the one last year where the, the woman had to decide to, to stay with the prince or whatever, or was that a royal it's holiday? One of the, uh, uh, yeah, it was yeah, another like no-brainer one. Year, Maybe they cross over. I want, I want a sequel to this, not this one. This yeah. is a prequel. This is a prequel. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> All right, what do we got? <laughs> what do we got? Speaking of accents, finally on Sunday, Speaking November nineteenth at eight p.m. Holiday Hotline. After leaving <laughs> London, okay, Abby sorry. connects with an anonymous caller while working at a cooking hotline. The caller is a single dad, John who Abby unknowingly has become smitten with in real mm. life. IRL, uh, directed by Mark Jean, who directed A Kismet Christmas and Eight Gifts of Hanukkah. I remember really liking both those movies, but not on a level that, like, uh, we'll talk about the direction, because I freaking loved it. Uh, written by Dwayne Poole, who sadly passed away before yeah. the release. I think oh, yeah. so Wayne, uh, Dwayne Poole uh, wrote Sugar Plum Fairy and Next Stop Christmas. Um, Julie Sherman Wolf, friend of the show, wrote uh, the teleplay to this. Um, she also wrote Hanukkah on Rye and a Holiday Spectacular last year. So, um, and the the brother's name was Paul. And I don't know if she, uh, you know, we we're obviously going to talk to Julie at some point. I don't know if Julie put that in the script. If that was real, yeah, very right. nice. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear. But yeah. we have Emily Tennant as Abby, also Tennant. Peggy. We'll explain it from Kind Hearted Christmas and the voice of Polly Pocket. Amazing. That is awesome. Uh, we have Niall Mater as Jack, also John, from When I Think of Christmas uh -oh. and Never Kiss a Man in a Christmas Sweater. Love yeah. that one. Cute. Uh, we start right off with another. Big, for those watching at home, Chris, you were a little small there. Uh, give us that reaction again when, when uh, Kevin said Niall matter yeah it was a fist bump fist bump fist bump and then an immediate like oh, yeah <laughs> I, so, I think movie. i think what we're know i think we're know what we're going here with this but, all right let's talk the movie. <laughs> uh starts off with another we get another villain opening scene oh. another villain jason the crappy chef oh. who is not only a bad business partner who steals all of abby's ideas a bad boyfriend who's cheating on her so blatantly <laughs> that it fucks up on his own <laughs> Also, yeah, like this guy, I'm not, I'm not saying this dude is ugly, but like three times the parents were like that extremely good looking ex boy. I'm like, he's not I know. weird. What? <laughs> and, and her dad is played, I forget the actor's name, I wish I had it here, is played by a guy who always plays Santa. He is the best and we love him. So good. And I have no idea if his accent, I, this was the one I was like, I don't know who's guy. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who's who. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But Abby uh, quits, rightfully so, nope. and breaks up with Jason and says, I'm going to Chicago. Because that's what you do. When that's you're... what you do. Oh, yeah. So much beautiful B-roll Chicago. Chicago looked great. You know what's up. <laughs> the bean looked beaning. Whoa. Oh, I thought we were. Uh, then we have the Jack struggling with his turkey. Oh. 22 pounder. But wait, wait <laughs> yep. a minute. Why is Jack struggling? 
Uh, Has he never cooked before? No, I guess he's never eaten turkey before, unless someone else used to cook it. Not his daughter <laughs> Jessica. No, his baby. Um, was he married at one point? What and the, then... did they did they say multiple times that this was the person that cooked? Like almost every, uh, every scene, time. every time we came back from the. Okay, it's time. Yeah! <laughs> Dead wife alert. Uh, oh god. Okay. Wife alert. We did it! We did it! 23! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Die hard numbers! 23? Yeah. All right, John What's McClain, it? we're coming no, out. No, no, no. Turkey's dead too. Did we hit 24? He cooks like <laughs> three know, turkeys, man. so. Uh, that was a bizarre, yeah. The, the practice turkeys was a weird choice. But. It was a weird choice. And <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. also, is that a thing? Is yeah. there really a ho There's a turkey hotline? Oh yeah, that's a thing, but also practice turkeys. That's how most people learn how to kiss. So it's weird. Not really. Not really. A pillow. A pillow. Anyways. Uh, uh, I again, so so we have a lot of uh, stuff going on. Uh, at first, Jack or John. That does get confusing, but uh when they first meet, he's a little um prickly. Oh, they, they meet in person. Yeah, yeah. There they are. Yeah, she breaks the doorknob on didn't do it on purpose. She couldn't get the doorknob to come off. It pops off in her hand. Yeah. He is an architect. He and his brother are kind of revitalizing this apartment building, and he freaks out because he's a big fan of, you know, the, the the way things are. Obviously, the guy's wife has passed, and and that's a big thing that weighs on him. Um, I will say his wife passed away, and I've talked about this on the show before. Chris and I have talked about it many times. The appropriate number of years yeah. to be widowed. And then fall in love is three. three. And I thought when he's trying to cook this turkey and he orders the Italian food for he and his daughter, I was like, well, this can't be a three year. These guys would be 600 pounds if they're eating out every single night. Yeah. And sure enough, he says later, it's been three years. It's been three years. It's the okay time to yeah. start dating again. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the same. Um, yeah, I think that was a similar time in the in the in the Friday or the oh. uh, yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, I think <laughs> Ruth and Earl were fine because Marty. It's been three years. Someone decided that <laughs> it was like that's immediately when you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they um, say it. His brother Mike even says it to him. He goes, "It's time to t time to stop living in the past. Start thinking about the future." And it's like, "Woof, still cold, buddy. Still cold." That couple, the brother, the brother wife couple was yeah. A little wasn't yeah. as written as well. I call it <laughs> sexy, but you call it what you will. That's I didn't I need as much PDA from them as we got. Like, I didn't need I, it. It was weird. nonstop. It was weird. It was weird. Uh, what I loved, and I think, Kevin, you probably love this, too, because oh, you, uh, you love, you know, uh, things, is that this basically <laughs> was a cottage cheese commercial, right? Uh, Daisy, yeah. It <laughs> was a Daisy, yeah. Daisy a dollop, dual a dollop a Daisy like I couldn't believe the amount of times yeah. I was force fed sour cream or cottage cheese. I was waiting for that as like the the hotline. Uh, first, add your Daisy to yeah. What? what okay, but no, that's not my serious thing. The serious thing is that the direction of having them in the same location, even though they were on a phone. Yeah. Because all three of us as performers know that phone calls are the worst yeah. when acting. So these two actors got to still act essentially off of each other because they were in the same space. It. It, was, yeah. it elevated the whole thing, yeah. uh, the direction, like you were saying, Kevin. Plus, they were so good at yeah. being right next to each other physically and right. and pretending like they were on phone. So they were like double the phone thing. Yeah, they had to really like fun. pretend like they were talking to somebody, but also not be conscious of the person standing right next right. to them. Right. I, I think they set up to, you know, it's very, um, more, more than uh, Sleep is in Seattle, it's very You've Got Mail and that concept of these people have met in real life and yeah. they're kind of falling in love in real life. And then they have, you know, um, Abby had this cover of being Peggy. You know, she meets Margaret in her apartment. Margaret asks her to work for the hotline because she's a cook. She doesn't want to cook anymore because Jason ruined that for her. But she's like, I'll do this. It's fine because I'm not cooking. I'm helping other people, which was right. very magnanimous of her. Mm -hmm. She takes the name Peggy from Margaret and she meets uh, Roger. That's D11, Mike. Apologies. No, to I know. I got Roger? him queued up. I got him queued up. Chris Roger is a GD star. Do you know what he's from? <laughs> what? Yeah. I, he's from the Santa Summit. No, That's Dasher. Yeah, yeah no. I, Stop it. You yeah. didn't know that, Chris? Get out I of here. I didn't notice. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That was the first notice. thing I was like, 
this guy needs to be in every one. This goes back to your multiverse thing. Like he needs to be the connecting weird, oh my like magical thing. In I loved him. So. We talked about it. You go back and listen to our Santa Summit review. We talked about him a lot. Uh, in this, he's <laughs> even better because he's much more front facing. Yes, front facing character. Um, I loved yeah. it. And then there was another connection to the Santa Summit, which was the mo- he's listed as the mafia guy in uh, <laughs> IMDb, oh, and hilarious. that's when she, that was the brother. That was the guy's brother. Yes, that's really and, funny. I which was so that. funny. And there were a lot of cameos. The mom from one of the ones that we saw was yep. the telemarketers. Um, a lot yeah. of. Them. Seemed like they were shooting multiple ones at the same time. Most likely, they're like, Travel. Travel. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. That was my one thing. And again, we were going through the, we were coming right up on the writer's strike. We had an actor strike. So we had, pro- that was a moment they could have gone really crazy with, and not like um, over the top, but like it would have been very, very justified to put a lot of cameos in as the other operators as they would cut around. It was the yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. that I was like, man, that's a missed opportunity. You could have brought in a handful of people. And people, that this is the direction where they're in the same it's room. And, wonderful. Yeah. Just, and there were moments where, like, she would keep walking, so she'd be off screen, but then be in the next room mm-hmm. that he walked mm-hmm. to and sat down. Like, are you kidding me? They, they, that director thought that beautifully. That was good. Uh, mapped out. Uh, another thing. Uh, uh, the family had to watch them kiss at the end. Yeah. That's yeah. my only, like, stop it. We got it. We got it. There <laughs> they are. And then there's the kiss. And then like, there's the creepy bum, family. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so I made my daughter watch the end of this movie with us. Be just She was in the room. I said, sit down and watch this. And then you're going to bed. So she sat down. She watched the kiss. She saw them watch. And she said, it was creepy that her, their family is watching them kiss. And then they go in for seconds. <laughs> what he said. So yeah. yes, Kit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, my god. Overall, I highly recommend this movie. Yes. I, it, I thought it was incredibly well shot. I love the characters. It wasn't as goofy as Santa Summit, Santa Summit. but no. it was pretty close, but with a lot more um, depth to it. And that's no commentary on Santa Summit, which is still my number one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I loved, I loved it. The Sundays have been my favorite so far. I know, I've been, man, what's going on? They, I think it's the the day that they take the most risks with ideas. You know what I mean? Maybe. And so I think this could have fallen real flat if it wasn't for the direction and the performances. Honestly, Agreed. it would have just been a generic old yeah, you been like, um, oh. movie um, with annoying people complaining about door no- knockers. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the direction, the way they talk to each other on the phone, um, it felt real, it felt realistic. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It, it, it could, I wish they went further with it kevin to your point because yeah. the fun moments were so fun and then they'd pull back and just do like a boring scene again i'd be like well i'm tapped yeah. out but but yeah. overall overall yeah yeah yeah, stuff, yeah yeah good stuff, good stuff. any any scenes that it reminded you of mike i was um well i mean of course it, it, it reminds you of the scene i mean my not what it reminds me my favorite scene oh, from the movie yeah is when the guy calls this... the hotline for the first time yeah. hello sam oh. this is dr marcia fieldstone on network america <laughs> Okay, what are you selling? Oh, no, it's just... <laughs> I thought you were going to show the entirety of Sleepless I would have just said we don't have enough time. We don't, yeah. <laughs> we don't have enough time. I could have decided between that and You've Got Mail, but both are exactly <laughs> the movie that this was, for sure. Yeah, it's still so good. Yeah, still absolutely. so good. You know what else was really great about these movies? Oh, They us. had hot dudes! Hot guys! It's that time again, everybody, for a Hallmark Holiday Home. The Dick Show. You know what I notice, oh. Mike? I notice when you sing and you're screen sharing, your yeah. vocals don't cut off. We might have to talk about you doing that all the time. Ooh. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, hey, everybody. We're here to talk about hot dudes, and we're going to rate them one out of ten, Heinies. We're beginning with this dude who is not Luke Bryant, the country star, <laughs> but Lucas, Lucas Bryant, Bryant Lucas the Lucas Hallmark Bryant. performer. Uh, I'll start. Yep. I didn't hate this dude. Nope. He doesn't jingle my bells in like a right. sexual way. Right. <laughs> but I think he's a great dad. Yeah, and I think he's a it. super husband. Very understanding. He works at a library. That's neat. I don't know. Good. Six. Good yeah. relationship with his mom, don't forget. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, so- funny you should say that, Chris. Uh, I wrote down my answer already because I didn't want to be swayed by you and Kevin. Oh. Um, the best, Probably wins best dad of the Hallmark season. 
yeah. so far, I think. So unfortunately, the sexiness does come into play. So yeah. six six point one I had down. 6. That's 1. nice. 1. Right on. So yeah. My notes literally say, as a dad, a ten. As a hot dude, six point five. Hey. Oh, we're, wow, we're so aligned. We should do this Pretty. weekly as a YouTube show. <laughs> 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 All right. Who's next? Next up, we have uh, this. Oh, nope. sorry, sorry. Right. I got, You're a I got hey! you. I got you. Whoa, I mean, boy, look at up? this picture. So, this guy, I don't know if Kevin, you realize this guy's in Letter Kenny. I did. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's that's literally the only reason why I picked because all the pictures of him from Letter Kenny are shirtless. So, yeah. because yeah. to me, because look at this, this, is, this is Kristen's preference. That's too big. <laughs> that's yeah. too big. It's too much. Um, he would smush me. That's like Hulk smash. Uh, so this guy's name is something. I don't remember what. <laughs> rude, rude. Uh, I don't. Uh, remember. Oh, his character. real name is Stephen Huzar. Okay, Huzar. Stephen Huzar. Huzar. Yep. Uh, I don't know. He. I'll go again. Peter. He Peter. is again what the world assumes is good looking. Um, I think he's too pretty. Yeah. He doesn't do it for me. He makes me no. nervous. He makes me feel squeamy. Like I'm like, yeah, it's too much. I don't like it. You're gonna be squeamy. The one thing that I did like uh, is this sweater that this dude was wearing. <laughs> Good God. Listen, if I could get my husband in a God darn cardigan like that one of these days. Um, so I'm going to give him a yeah. four. Because he, yeah. Yeah. Consistency. Mike, if you don't mind. Well, actually, Mike, I want to hear yours first, and then I will tell you why I say consistency. Yeah, I, I four point nine. I'm not even gonna get into it. Ooh, <laughs> not even gonna get into it. Well, in 2022, last year we reviewed my Christmas uh, bodyguard, my Christmas guard, or whatever it was called. Yeah. Uh, Kristen gave him a four then as well, huh. saying my Holly wasn't jingling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kristen, you can't laugh at your own joke, even if it is a year old. Mike, you actually, he dropped for you. You were a 6.5. I personally was a 5. On this one, I came up a little bit because I said he starts off as a cold fish, which I definitely thought. And I wanted to like him, but recoiled when he and Melanie had that fight at the end. Mm. I gave him a 5.7. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I was waffling. I was almost a 5.1, but... It was, That's fine. It was, fine. It was fine. The movie. The movie didn't help. So this next one, I need to explain myself. Yes. Okay. Let well, me this is the guy. This is him. Oh, yeah, okay, but I thought it was supposed to be Scott Wolf. That we're no. Doing. No. Sorry. I meant. To, I said the Scottish yeah. dude, not to be confused with the Scott Scottish Wolf. wolf. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not going to objectify Scott Wolf. Yeah, he gets I did. A ten. You know yeah, what I mean? He's a so ten. He's fine. A, he's a ten. Not a ten. This no, felt will... more interesting to me yeah. because this we got to. Like, I, I also for some weird reason I. I Scott Wolf isn't sexual to me. Yeah. <laughs> Scott you, Wolf, you grew up. Well, I think yeah. I grew up watching him as like a yeah. brother and like yeah. yeah. So um this dude, however, I have sleigh bells. Uh -oh. Vera jingling. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> it's Jingle right. sound of effect. Jingle sound of effect. Uh wow. Don't mind, don't uh yeah. his accent, yep. thank you. Yeah. His beard, thank you. Mm -hmm. His kindness, he mm -hmm. was never mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just like was that. always, and he was sweet to his mom. Yep. And he rides horses. <laughs> and he... <laughs> How high are you going? How high are you going? <laughs> he gets a nine! Nine! Very nice. Class. I loved him. You know, I, honestly, I would give him the same number I gave Scott Wolf anyhow, so it's not going to matter. Um... I, I agree with everything you say, Kristen. One of the things I really liked was when he took out, he took Brad and Lindsay out to see the Shetland ponies. And then he said, I'm going to leave you guys. Yeah. You can walk to the restaurant, it's, or the pub. It's not far from here. And they were like, no, that's fine. And it was cool because it was like, he could have been macking on her the whole time. His Mac Bell, that was his name. By the way, Mac Bell, brother to Stringer Bell in the wire. Like, right? <laughs> it has to be. But just because I'm off the moon. <laughs> and I want to talk about the wire for a second. Uh, but I really dug that, that he was like, they clearly need their time together. I'm going to let them have it. And he left and like, mm. to have that, very know, good. Very good. Um, he was, he was great. I love them. So I give them both an 8.5. Woo. 8.5. I have a, I'm right, right between you, but not too far off. Um, yeah. Charming. Never had an issue. Was the nicest person ever and was sexy. His teeth look good. Woo. His hair looked good. He looked Woo. great in a kilt. His accent was 
my God, make him do voiceovers for anything. Anything. Well, welcome to Scotland, Scotland Tourism Board, whatever. 8.6, yeah. everybody. 8.6. Yay! 8. And nobody was happier to lose movies. the dance off than him to. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Put him in more movies, Hallmark. Let's yep. do it. Uh oh. <laughs> Someone's shirt came off. <laughs> Wait, this isn't a scene. Mine? No. <laughs> this was a scene in the movie that I put in. So next up, we've got, uh, I was going to say friend of the show, but I think I just really like him. Uh, Niall Mater. Matter. Mater. I think it's Mater. I know. believe it's Mater, yeah. Uh, so I, there's something about this man's voice and the fact that this movie was centered around his voice being on the phone mm -hmm. that like, mm -hmm. good um, call. Good call. It's good call. it, it, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, I like I know exactly it. what, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. And he's just like, he's my type of dude where it's like, goodness gracious, you're adorable, but sexy. And you wear a cardigan. You were great to your kid. You lost your wife, but three years are up, buddy. Let's get moving. It's time. Get that holly jingling. And like, here's the thing. He was a perfectionist, but also began crumbling that because of yeah. anyway. Oh my goodness. He also a good sweater. 9.5. 9.5. Sorry, all, all I said was also a great sweater. Also, a great also a great sweater. Five is a good look sweater. This, look at this guy in a tank top. It looks really good. Uh, Kevin? yeah, Kevin, go. Me, uh, listen, I, I I could go on and on as well as Kristen did. I like him a lot. Um, I will say, watch the end scene when they have their kiss. Mm. Um, when he comes out of the house. Because he goes through a lot of emotions, which is awesome. And it's all in his face because it's all close-ups. When I was grabbing stills, some of which you saw, some you didn't, uh, for this episode, he is still heartbroken. And I yeah. love that. That Yes, three years are up. It's going to be a rocky one year into this new relationship. And I dug that. And then when he gave the smile, though, it like changed everything. And I thought to myself, A... I hope they kissed. They did. B, I hope people saw they did. And then C, as my daughter pointed out, I hope he goes in for seconds. He gets an 8.6. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, I'm only, only, I did the Scottish guy did it for me. And so I was comparing over the weekend. This yeah. is the guy was still great. So I'm going yeah. 8.1. Still high score. Just That's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, also, I forgot to mention in my scoring, he went in to touch her hair and then checked for consent. And yeah. then and I was like, oh my God. Nice. I think he was going to kiss her too. Cause he yes. goes, is this okay? But she said, no. Yeah. She said, she said I'm, no. I'm still fake. And it was that she didn't want to kiss him under the, she was lying in her was lying because she was Peggy and he didn't know that. So. All right. Should we lying. play the uh, H3O outro everybody? Outro! outro! Claudia, whatever you thought he could do for you, however you thought he could help, Make things easier. Whatever. Yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> My favorite part was it looked like Niall Mater is watching with us. <laughs> Niall Mater. Niall Mater uh, is listen, watching. you can go and see a show in the Philadelphia area if you're in the Philadelphia area and you like Hallmark and you like Kristen Finger. Hallmarkable is at Comedy Sports Philly. It is running from. Almost when you see this episode from Friday through the holidays, you can go to uh, comedysportsphilly.com yeah. to get tickets. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I love that cast. I love the wreath. I'm not going to lie. It's my the wreath. wreath is hot stuff. This yeah. last, no spoilers because we will never do this again, but this yeah. dress rehearsal was about a small town <laughs> in North Connecticut, Yeah, <laughs> which turned out. To be the North Pole. About that, that's it's. There's a portal. There's a portal. Um, uh, and okay. you can uh, like and subscribe and tell your friends about our show. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We don't do much on there. Um, at uh, Remark the Show. You can also email us at remarktheshow at gmail.com. Tell us what you think. Tell us yeah. your favorite movies, the movies you hated. Tell us what you're looking forward to. Tell us what you're not. Oh, uh, you're tell us what to. we're missing out on by not watching other channels. And we will not care. Yeah, this is next week. <laughs> we have, listen, Too many I'm, movies. I'm not even going to read them all. Don't it's even read them because I got to go. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Check them all out. They look 
pretty good. Haul out the holly part and two. Eight o'clock only. Eight o'clock only. Yep. And about, oh, just eights. Just <laughs> yeah. Eight. I don't know. There's a six or two. I got. It. <laughs> no, no, no. Everyone's got to do letters to Santa because that's the one that the magic pen. I got, I need a magic pen in my life. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking forward to Luke McFarland's too, where he's apparently Santa, but like tied up. Yeah, catch me if you claws. I think yeah. is that the one. Yeah. yeah. So uh, watch ball, watch ball. That's what I say. And we'll talk about um next week. Until then, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy. Happy. Eat a lot of food. It's been a long, exhausting day. Your troubles just won't go away. One thing that gets you through these is watching cheese. I love when he pops up. Oh, no, Chris. Where's, where's Chris? She's already watching the movies. <laughs>